Qurani concept of the spiritualization of life as a whole. The first basic principle that the Quran has laid down is that a Muslim should keep in mind all the time that uh, he is here only to serve God and not to serve his own purposes as they might emerge from his own self. The purposes, of course, will emerge from his own self, but they have got to be subordinated to divine pleasure. This is the basis of the spiritualization of life in Islam, because Islam has converted all worldly things and all worldly uh, activities into acts of worship. If these worldly activities are performed with the consciousness that they are being performed in obedience to the divine law and the divine scheme of things, in order that the divine purpose may be uh, uh, fulfilled, then every action, however mundane it may appear to us to be, is an act of worship according to Islam. When we take the food or when we take rest or anything of that sort, you see, which appear to us to be non-religious acts, <coughs> they have been converted into acts of worship by this formula, by the Holy Quran. As the Holy Quran has clearly laid down, that the motto and the ideal and the manner and mode of a Muslim's life should be, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiaya wa mati lillahi wa bilahi. La sharika, la. That uh, my prayer and my sacrifice, and not only these things, but my life itself, every aspect of my life and my death, everything is for Allah alone. And it is for Allah alone with undivided uh, allegiance. It is not that I may say that 99% of it is for God and 1% one, one for someone else, even for my own self or <coughs> my own ego. <clears throat> then the Holy Quran has given a complete uh, system of how to acquire uh, uh, a, a spirituality, as we may call it, or how to develop your spiritual faculty. Uh, in this connection, as a matter of fact, uh, the Salat or prayer, the obligatory, five obligatory prayers, they are the basic exercise. But they become the basic exercise only when these prayers are performed with the spirit and in the manner in which the Holy Prophet was asked perform. If they are performed merely as a ritual, <clears throat> they might create in an honest man a sort of uh, um, a spiritual outlook which will be very superficial, of course. But it won't go beyond that. It will go beyond that only when <coughs> we accept what the Prophet wasalam, ordered. He says, that the stage of al-ihsan or beautification of one's life according to Islam, this stage is فَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِلَّمْ تَكُمْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ Serve thy Lord as if thou art seeing Him and then serving Him with a direct, dynamic, vibrant, living experience of God. Serve thy Lord in this manner and, of course, in connection with serve thy Lord, worshipping Him comes first and stands first. You see, because in, in the, the act of worship or the act of formal worship or the act of uh, devotional worship, whatever we may call it, is an act which is meant solely for communion with God. And in the communion with God, if we are not conscious of what we are doing, if we, if we do not build, build up that uh, relationship with God consciously in our consciousness, 
then of course we do not benefit from it in the manner in which we should. So the, the Holy Prophet والسلام, laid down certain ideals, uh, I mean says, uh, 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 certain rules. The first rule is لا صلاة إلا بقدور القلب Prayer is not prayer at all without the fullest concentration of the mind. And not only of the mind, of the total personality. That is what Islam wants. And consequently Islam has not prescribed dhyan and dhyan as it is in Hinduism for instance. Islam has not asked you merely to sit down quietly and to close your eyes and then meditate. That is also there in Islam. But Islam has asked you to acquire that habit whereby your total personality may be in a state of communion with God. And consequently we are asked to pray even in congregation and of course that has been made obligatory because we are all, all the time in human company. So we have got to acquire the habit of remembering God and experiencing Him <coughs> even while we are in our daily life, social life. And consequently, the congregational prayer has been made obligatory that we cultivate this exercise right there. Then we have got to make certain postures. We cannot just become God intoxicated as people say, you see, in that fashion. You see, but uh, uh, we have got to remain conscious even of this world all the time. Because unless we are conscious of our body and, and, and of the world around us, we cannot stand and we cannot bow down and we cannot prostrate, we cannot do all these physical acts. So this is the beauty in Islamic prayer that it teaches us to cultivate God consciousness or co-presence with God uh, uh, in our daily social life. But the Holy Prophet والسلام, said that this is to be done with the fullest concentration of your entire personality. La salata illa be. Then he says that the manner of worshipping should be that as if you are seeing God and then worshipping Him and then communing with Him. I mean, say, if we think on this as to what it means, it is something extremely difficult. Yes, but that is now. But that is what we are, I mean, say, that, that's why the Holy Prophet has used the word ka'anna katara, as if thou art seeing. I mean, say, the effect which would be produced if you see God and then worship Him, this, this same effect you should try to acquire when you are worshipping. Of course, you are not seeing Him. He is not something tangible and uh, physical. But ka'anna katara, as if you are seeing and so long it may not be possible for you to do this, to, uh, to arrive at this stage, this is the highest level. Then the minimum is فَإِلَّمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ That uh, you, you do not have the consciousness that you are seeing God, but you should at least have the consciousness that God is seeing you and you are worshipping Him. This is the minimum and that is the maximum. Now, if we don't uh, acquire even the minimum, what are we doing? It becomes only a ritual. And of course, the ritual also has got its merit. That he has commanded us to go to the masjid or to stand up on our prayer mat and to pray to him five times a day and we are obeying his command. That merit is there, definitely. And also when we are doing it, he sees uh, honestly, sincerely, I mean say with our own level, whatever it is, then we do acquire a sort of a spiritual orientation in our life and a sort of a spiritual outlook. But that is not uh, uh, what uh, Islam actually wants, what it demands actually. It is just like this that a person who wants to be a doctor may just learn a few uh, medicines from the pharmacopoeia. Now if he knows those medicines, synchona is good for uh, malaria and this thing is good for that and that and it ought to be given in such and such doses for so many days and like that, you see. Then uh, he can have the advantage to that extent. But he will be considered to be a uh, real doctor, a real physician only when he has 
study the anatomy, physiology, the, uh, therapeutics, etiology, diagnostics, and all those things. You see. So in the, in the same manner to acquire from our prayers what God Almighty wants us to acquire, can be acquired only in that manner in which the Holy Prophet said. This is one thing. Now, how to pray in that fashion? That is the question. And here is something which I am saying which our ulama are not teaching. Ulama of this age, of this 20th century, they, they never teach. And you will not find this in, in any book whatsoever. They start right with evolution, with Tahara, evolution, arkan of prayers, you see. So many sunnah, so many parts. That is all right, you see. Whatever they teach is perfectly correct. But there is something previous to it. I mean, so in order to bring that concentration of the total personality, the Holy Quran has also taught some other things. Besides this uh, ob obligatory prayer, these formal prayers we might call or institute, uh, institutional uh, devotions. <clears throat> it has taught us meditation and contemplation. Uh, it has taught us withdrawal from the world. You see, now this withdrawal from the world has been taught in Islam. Not in the same manner as it has been taught in Hinduism or Buddhism or uh, Christianity. The withdrawal from the world should not be total. We should keep in contact with our life in this world and with our business, with all that we have got to do here, with our obligations. At the same time, we have got to actually practice this Withdrawal. Every day. <coughs> and in a larger measure, maybe every uh, week or every fortnight or every month or at least once a year. At least once a year. You might have read, of course you must have read about Irtikaf. You must also have read in books on Islam that when a person enters a masjid with the niyyah, with the intention of Evitakaf, then even if he is there for that prayer only, he gets the sawab of Evitakaf for that much time. But again it is not a ritual. That while you are entering a mosque, although you are going there only for five minutes or ten minutes just to offer that prayer, you just say, I make the, the niya of Kritika. That won't do. Uh, you will have to uh, fix up your, your entire consciousness on this fact that you are now in a state of Kritika. And Kritika is seclusion and withdrawal from the world. So unless you have that consciousness, merely the intention on your part or saying out that niya will not do actually. Now, uh, this is how Islam wants. Islam has combined this world and the other world, the best of this world and the best of the other world, and that is what we have been asked to pray to God. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi Now, uh, this is a, an original and unique contribution of uh, Islam. So it gives us the spiritual exercise in meditation and in contemplation in order that we may be able to acquire spirituality in depth. At the same time it has not withdrawn us from the from all good and legitimate activities of this world, whether on individual level or on social level. Rather, Islam has gone to the extent that the function of a Muslim is to build this world. And in this Islam has gone to this limit that the Holy Prophet says 
اے عمل لے دنیا کا کا انہ کا تعیش و عبدا ورک فار بلڈنگ اس ورلڈ اس کلچر ان اس سیولیزیشن ورک فار ایٹ with the consciousness as if thou art going to live in this world for all time with that devotion work for building this world into a good world its culture civilization knowledge everything industry technology and all those things see. build them up with the consciousness and with that devotion as if thou art going to live in this world for good but اعمل لے آخرتی کا کہ انہ کا تموت و غدن and at the same time work for thy life hereafter as if thou art definitely going to die tomorrow and consequently السلام علیکم and consequently the beauty of Islam is that in our daily life it has combined the world and the hereafter both it has combined material pursuit and spiritual pursuit both in a very balanced manner and this balanced manner is like this that uh, in acquiring in trying to acquire spirituality in depth you must do certain things during your 24 hours side by side with all your activities pertaining to this world so to say your activity pertaining to this world which is immediate to you it should be dotted all through as you get up from sleep and up to the time that you go to sleep it should be dotted with spiritual exercises i am using this word uh, you see with uh, the uh, in order to bring uh, the proper connotation of is spirituality that these are exercises actually and what are these the holy quran says uzkur rabbaka fi nafsik tadarruan wa khifa wa dun al jahri min al qawl bil ghudub wal asal wa la takum min al ghafilin this is the first exercise The exercise is remember thy lord uskur rabbak fi nafsik in thine heart not with thy tongue fi nafsik tadarruan wa khifa in utmost humility and fear of evil consequences if there is deviation wa dun al jahri min al qawl without intoning it بالغضوب والآصال every early morning and every late hour of the uh, 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 working hours of the night I mean say when, when the, uh, the last minute comes that now you are going to go to sleep up to uh, uh, at that time and when you get up in the morning the first thing before you offer your Salat al-Fajr mind you This is, this is something different. And these are the best times for meditation, I may tell you. When you get up from your sleep, stay in bed. Stay in bed right there. And close your eyes. And close your mouth. And start this med- meditation on God. God as my creator, God is the ruler and administrator of this entire universe and of my life. Everything of my life is in his hands. Every particle in this world moves only under his command. You see? And he has been kind and he has been merciful. He has created all these things for my use in order that I may benefit from them and I can benefit from them only if I employ them in the proper manner and not in the improper manner. You see, Uzkur Rabba Kafinus, meditate, remember thine Lord. It can also be done in this manner that I call out on my Lord without intoning. I may say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, 
or anything else, you see. This is Zikrullah. But Zikrullah, not with the tongue. Huh? No, not only Khafi. Khafi is slowly. It, it is with consciousness only, without the help of the tongue. This is called meditation. And in that connection, of course, again, there are numerous lessons into which this meditation of the morning and the night is, has been, has been uh, divided by the eminent teachers in Islam, by Sayyidina Ghassul Azam, Sayyidina Fajr Din, and all these great men. They were masters of, of this science, you see, and consequently they have now given to us in full detail. In the night, this zikr, yeah, uh, yes, in the night, this zikr should be followed by your muhasaba. As the Quran says, Ya you are Ladina Amanu Tukullah, well, Tanzul Nafsum Makad Damat Legad. O believers, be careful of your duty to Allah. Itakullah. Well, Tanzul Nafsum Makad Damat Legad. And let every human being continuously indulge in self examination as to what he has sent for the morrow. What evil or what good he has sent for tomorrow ahead of him, what he has already committed and its consequences he is going to face. About it, it has been said in Islam, Hasabu Kabla Antu Hasab. Take account, continuously take account of yourself before you are called to account on the Day of Judgment. So every night when you are going to bed, when a Muslim is going to bed and he performs this zikr, at the same time, he uh, undertakes his self-examination as to from any sin that he, any wrong that he has committed, it is as if he has not committed that wrong. The spiritual effects of that are washed away by the Tawbah. So he should wash away those before he goes to sleep. No, no, no. If, if he, that is his intention, then it is not his Tawbah. No, 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 no. Tawbah is very significant. Tawbah, Tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear in the Holy Quran. Those who are making Tawbah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, and they are uh, committing the same evil time, and again, it is not Tawbah. It is a mockery. Toba is with the firmness of the will. I am not going to do it. But it stands to reason if you are going to do it every night. It means every day you are making a guna. No, no. You, 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 it, it is not merely guna, you see. It is... Even this thing is guna if you become forget, forgetful of any of your duties. Even this is guna if for a moment your mind is, is absent from God. It is guna. It is a sin. We have been created by God. We are enjoying whatever we are enjoying through Him and from Him. Every breath which comes and goes is His blessing. And in this blessing, if we can for, for get Him, it is a major sin. It's not that if a person speaks falsehood or if he robs someone or does all, uh, 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 any one of those things, only that thing is sin in, in Islam. Is he? Yes. <coughs> then, when when he when when a Muslim gets up in the morning, then what he had told to God last night, I mean, say uh, 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 during the night, he must make up his mind with zikr, he strengthen himself with divine remembrance, communion with God, and uh, he must uh, make a. Uh, suggestion to himself very strongly, as strongly as possible, that I am going this day which has dawned, which is dawning, in this day I am going to behave as best as possible in the manner in which my Lord wants me to behave. And then of course he gets up from his bed, you see, and then he makes his 
Vodu and goes for the Fali prayer. In this, a Muslim must all the time be assessing his spiritual tone. And if he finds that the pressure of anti-spiritual influences is great, and he cannot normally withstand this pressure, then he has been asked, Tabattal ilayhi tabtila, withdraw from the world. The withdrawal may be for one hour, two hours, three hours, one day, one, one day and one night, one week or anything of that sort. You see, but that, that tone should come back, that tone should be there, that his life is only for God. And in order to bring that tone, it is absolutely essential that he should withdraw from that scene of activity which involves him in an anti-spiritualist tone of mind. Then the third lesson is, in order to develop spiritually, he should perform the remembrance of God Almighty as much as he can. Because the Holy Quran says, Allah bi zikri Allahi tatma innul qulub. The hearts find their tranquility, which is the highest achievement of man. We, we also speak peace of mind. That is the highest wealth. A person may be wealthy, but if he has no peace of mind, his, his wealth is of no account. A person may be an administrator, or he may be in power, he may be a ruler, but if he has no peace of mind, his life is not worth living. Peace of mind is the is the final blessing, you see, the final achievement. If a person has got that, he has got everything. Now, in order to, uh, consequently, the Holy Quran has mentioned here his spirituality in terms of peace of mind. Allah bi zikrillahi tatma innul qulub. It is also beyond that. Tatma innul qulub, the hearts are satisfied. And when the Qur'an speaks the word qalb, it does not only mean a cross-section of human consciousness. It rather means total human consciousness, including cognition, cognition, volition, knowing and feeling and willing. This is the qalb. According to Islam. Now, the uh, real uh, satisfaction of the Qalb, Yatminan, is possible only if a human being acquires knowledge to an extent and in a manner whereby his convictions are made firm and he gets out of the realm of doubt. And this is what the word Iman means. Iman means to come into Aman, to come into safety from all doubt. 